So check this out. I got me a little bit of coffee, a long john, my favorite donut. I don't know if you can hear the rain. You might hear some thunderstorms. My hair is wet from running in the rain. My dog is in the background playing with this toy, so you might hear some squeaking. Listen, it's gonna be a rough night. My anxiety will not let me sleep. So I say fuck it. Let me film and enjoy the rest of the night. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. And because I have been clinically diagnosed with depression and also anxiety, I like to share my experiences by sharing a video and reacting to it. I've been reacting to videos by Psych2Go. If you haven't already, please subscribe to their channel. They're short videos, five to seven minutes long. They're animated and educate you with the different forms of mental illnesses and how we deal with it. So today, because I'm having problems sleeping, I'm gonna react to a video called 13 Things People Don't Realize You Do Because of Your Anxiety. I don't know what things I might or might not do that's caused by anxiety, but I'm about to find out. All right, let's go. About 40 million adults age 18 and older suffer from anxiety in the U.S., making it the most common mental disorder in the region. It develops from a complex set of factors that include genetics, brain chemistry, personality, and life events. It's more than just feeling nervous to speak at a public event. It's a mental disorder characterized by excessive worry or fear strong enough to interfere with daily life. With that, many don't realize things a person does because of their anxiety. This is a list of 13 of those things. All Number right. one, you disappear without notice. Anxiety can hit you anywhere, whether it's at the grocery store, a party, or at work. You just need 15 minutes alone to recollect yourself. Uh. People who don't understand anxiety may see this as rude or weird, but it's mm. something that you really need. Number two, you... That also... I, I'm also an introvert. Being an introvert can be actually caused from my anxiety. Because I don't remember being so isolated when I was younger in my 20s. In my 20s, I was really outgoing and very social. Or maybe because I was younger and I, maybe because I have a family now. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Freak out over the time it takes someone to respond to your text. Anxiety blows a lot of things out of proportion. Whether you send a text to your mom or that special someone, when they take a while to respond, you begin to wonder if what you said was a little too weird to oh, no. or if you're annoying them. Why are they taking forever? Oh Just no. Said. Number three, you- Now, I feel like anybody would think that way, but someone with anxiety, it will not stop. Your brain will still continue to wonder why they haven't text. And it will not stop until they text back. But by the time they text back, you already have it in your head that there was negative reasons on why it took them so long to respond. And that is so sad. And by the way, I'm very, I'm very intuitive. So sometimes I could be right that it's negative, but you know. Over check things. Teachers have always told you to double check your homework before turning it in. But what if you check it too much? Too much to the point of never turning it in. Your anxiety makes you a perfectionist. Whether it's homework or checking to see if the door is locked, you check and recheck things multiple times. Sometimes you know something is perfect, but your anxiety won't let you relax unless it's checked one more time. Or two. Number four. Okay, well, as for me, I do double check a lot of things, but it's only because I tend to miss something. And even when I check it a few times, I still tend to miss what I was supposed to find. I don't know why. That's just my brain, I don't know. You don't go to parties. It's not that you're antisocial. You actually do want to go to the party. Whether it's worrying about the big crowd or loud music, all you want to do is have a good time like everyone else. Yeah. But you know your anxiety won't let you. Because of that, you skip the party altogether. Number five, I want to go enjoy myself. I want to be around people. I want to laugh. I want to have a good time, have fun, not worry about the world and the stress of it. So sometimes I would make plans and then the day before I'm like, you know, I come up with a reason why I can't go. Or sometimes I end up going to these parties or social events and my anxiety kicks in. My leg does this thing where it shakes a lot. My leg will not stop shaking. And when I, when I catch my leg doing that, I stop it and try to control it. But I always need something um, to mess with. You know how people use gadgets to mess with, to keep their hands you know, busy from the anxiety? I need to drink something. So if it's not beer or alcohol, I need, drink, I need to drink water. Whenever I'm uncomfortable, I sip. 
you've let opportunities pass you by. As a perfectionist, you often think you're not good enough for opportunities presented to you. You become afraid of failing and making a fool of yourself. Because of this, you convince yourself to not take the opportunity at all. Number six, certain dates give you anxiety. People with anxiety tend to remember the exact date of traumatic events. When the uh. date arrives, those emotions once again surface, making it very difficult to get on with your day-to-day -day routine. Number seven, you hold on to your- I feel like that's anyone though phone too much. Sometimes it's hard for you to just sit and wait. It makes you uneasy to see people busy with something while you're just sitting there. As a result, <laughs> you need to have your phone or something to fidget with. Number eight. And like I said, I feel like that's everyone, especially nowadays. To be in a room full of strangers, let's say at the doctor's office, it's so rare to not see someone looking at their phone. Everyone's stuck to their damn phones. And I truly believe that technology, social media, phones, have driven anxiety into people's lives a lot more today than back then. This could be the reason why this is happening. You don't make new friends. It may seem like you don't want to make new friends, but you actually worry too much about the kind of impression you're making on people. Afraid? You convince yourself that making no impression is better than making a bad one. As a result, you end up keeping to yourself even though you really want to meet new people. Number- I'm gonna tell you something you may not know. I signed up for Bumble BFF and that was a huge step for me. Growing up, I didn't believe in friends. In my 20s, I created a couple friendships. One passing away and another one doing me dirty as fuck. To the point where like, I don't need friends. Don't want friends. But getting to the age I am today and my wife and I having a separation, I realized that I have no one to turn to. I have nobody to talk to. Look to my left, ain't nobody there. Look to my right, ain't nobody there. I'm like, well, goddamn, I'm a lonely ass person. I need to break out of my shell. I need to try a little bit. It's a big step. And you dread going to school slash work even though you've done it a million times before. Unfortunately, anxiety doesn't care about how many times you've done your day-to-day -day routine. It hits when it wants to hit. Before going to work, you may feel your heart race, have sweaty palms, and feel jittery. Number 10, you're clingy in relationships. You really care about your partner. And due to that, you may ask too many questions or send too many texts because you want to know how they are. This may come off as clingy, but your intentions aren't bad. You're just a little overprotective because of your anxiety. <laughs> Number 11. Okay, thank you. Thank you for saying something positive about that. People hear the word clingy and they think, they think negatively, like it's something bad. My wife, for example, I'm gonna bring her up. I love her, I care about her deeply. And because I know her past and the things that she's gone through and things that may be happening now, I will be texting and I will be calling her to see how she's doing, how she's feeling because I care. Maybe she needs her space, but at the same time, I wanna make sure she's good. I'm a protective person. So if anyone tries to cause harm to my wife, whether they're her family, whether they're her friends, whether there's some stranger from off the street, I'm protective, y'all. Like, I'm not gonna let you step, step all over her. I don't care whose toes I'm stepping on because this is my wife. Call me clingy. I don't care. I know some of y'all would want a wife like me, okay? <laughs> you cancel plans. Making plans is tough because in the moment of making a plan, you're confident and ready to take on the world. When the date finally rolls around, anxiety can all of a sudden hit and you have to cancel. Sometimes you even have to cancel the plans you made in the first place. <laughs> yes, I do that all the time. I do that all the time. When that day comes and goes, the following day, I regret it. I regret it and I wish I would have gone through with it. You rehearse what you're going to say before making a phone call. You prep and rehearse everything you're going to say before making a phone call because you're afraid of making a mistake or forgetting what you had to say. Yes. You know, this is great for phone interviews, but it's exhausting when all you want to do is ask customer service a question uh, or talk to a friend. Uh, Number third, I write. Can y'all believe this? I, I, I write down little notes so I don't miss anything. And I want to come off professional also. I just don't want to especially when I'm upset or about, I don't want to come off rude, but I also want to put my foot down and let them know where they, where they went wrong. Overthinking. 
thinking when you ask someone to be alone you're not asking them to leave forever sometimes you need a break for people in order to calm yourself down when you take that break people who don't understand anxiety tend to think you're either upset with them or that you don't like them uh. it's hard for you to keep friends because of this you do uh. need your alone time but you're not asking to be left alone forever that's the end of the video if you have anxiety we at Psych2Go would like to know your thoughts on the list and if we missed anything leave that in the comments below and hit that like button don't forget to check out hashtag 30 days of brave to help you beat your anxiety we'll see you guys next time see ya i fall under every single one of those characteristics damn it wish i didn't but it is what it is tell me your experience do you have anxiety or do you know someone who has it or even after watching this did that click through your mind and made you think of someone that actually has these characteristics and thought to yourself like damn i think that person has anxiety maybe i shouldn't take things too personal we have to be understanding of people we, we never know what kind of mental illness that they have or what they're going through comment below and let me know your experience all right you guys make sure you like comment share and subscribe and please hit that bell so you can get notified every time i upload see you in the next video peace